Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Business Central Musings. The topic for today is vendor prepayments and uh, this is uh, a continuation of uh, uh, a previous video uh, where we focused on customer prepayments. And as we saw in the customer prepayments, sometimes we have to ask um, as sellers of products or services, we have to ask our customers for a deposit. Similarly, when we buy products from a vendor, from our, one of our vendors, we have to pay uh, a deposit to them for whatever we're asking them to, to ship to us. So this is the use case, uh, vendor prepayments. We're going to go to a similar uh, set of um, actions like we went with the customer prepay. This is the plan for this uh, YouTube video. We're going to create a purchase order first and then um, within that purchase order we're going to change the prepayment uh, percentage to be um, a, a percentage. We'll see um, what type of purchase order we'll create and we'll choose a prepayment percentage. Um, if we want um, if the vendor wants us to pay uh, on the spot and the payment for the prepayment to be applied to the prepayment invoice right away, we're going to use, just like in the customer prepayments case, we're going to use a payment method code, method code of cash. And then uh, we'll see how the prepayment, um, the, the status of the purchase order will switch to prepayment, pending prepayment. Um, the pay, uh, payment for the prepayment will be executed at that time and then next is to post the remaining um, purchase invoice and uh, to create a payment for the remaining amount uh, cut the check and post the payment applied to the remainder of the pre of the uh, purchase order purchase invoice that's the plan. Let's get going. So we are here in uh, Business Central. I have um, a sandbox based on version 24. We're going to go and create a new purchase order. We are on the purchase orders page and we're going to choose uh, one of the vendors. Let's say first up consultants. and um, nothing in the general let's choose a product that we want to purchase and we're gonna go with the same um, it's around amount a thousand dollars well it's a purchase so now the uh, the cost will be whatever we pay for it which is 780 um, just like in the other case we're going to use non-taxable to make um, the posting less crowded um, and yes and let's choose a quantity here let's choose uh, maybe um, seven we have five thousand four hundred let's choose uh, maybe only six get closer to five thousand Okay, um, and um, and that's that's it for the lines. We can go to the prepayment area here, and from <clears throat> from forty six hundred, let's say um, the the vendor wants us to pay thirty percent, and of course uh, changing it uh, changing the prepayment on the header will. Um, propagate to the lines which we want we can go now to attempt to post uh, this the prepayment so you go to actions posting uh, post prepayment invoice but let's do the preview first 
yes we didn't put the vendor invoice number let's say prepay all three and then actions posting prepayment preview prepayment and if we look at vendor ledger entries we're gonna have a an invoice to cover the prepayment which is 1400 which is 30 percent of um 4600 which makes sense it's 1400 if the vendor was to ask us to pay right away this 30 percent um, we need to choose a payment method code um, to pay with cash remember the cash account has the cash payment method code has an offset of uh, GL 1800, 1800, which is the petty cash. So we're going to take from the 1800 and pay uh, the deposit or the prepayment. So let's choose here cash. And if we want to preview now what's going to happen. Remember, we had only one vendor ledger entry when we didn't use the cash. Now we have two, the invoice for 1400 and also the payment for 1400. So the prepayment is already paid with this method. So let's get a, a get. Um, let's go ahead and do follow the same use case as in the customer prepayments um, but in this case we want to prepay pay the prepayment right away so pause the prepayment and you see now the status of the purchase order is pending prepayment um, we can now let's say the remainder which is uh, 4600 minus 1400 like that's going to be um, 3200 uh, that's going to be paid um, not necessarily immediately so we change the payment method code here to what was before and let's go to post and let's preview the posting Yes, we need to change that here. Just change it to another vendor invoice and preview the posting. And we look at the vendor ledger entries. We see the remainder is 3300 most likely there is some discount here um, if we go to the general ledger entries we see let's move me here we see the 4684 we see the 1405 which is the prepayment and the remainder is expected and dropped in the accounts payable looks good the item ledger entry is is probably the receipt purchase receipt and it all looks good so let's go ahead and post the receipt and the invoice at the same time and have a look at the posted invoice we had six Athena desk at 780. That's totaling 14, $4,684. dollars, and we paid already, and the money are in the prepayment account, which I picked up as prepayment account. Um, another existing GL other liabilities, so we have this um, 14 already paid, 1400 already paid. So the remaining is 
$28. Um, let's go to find entries because we want to be fast. We go to the vendor ledger entries. We see the invoice here for the remaining amount, $32.78, remaining amount $32.78. All looks good. We can create a payment from here. Uh, it's already chosen all for me. And the payment journal now is opening up with this new transaction. We look at apply entries and we see uh, the last transaction here is the invoice we generated. Um, and it's $32.78 left to pay. Looks all good, balance is zero. And now, and now we need to, to post this transaction, but before we post, we need to cut the check. So let's print the check. We're printing the check put it in the envelope, send it to the vendor. And now we can uh, we can preview posting just in case we want to see the GL entries. We were supposed to cover the, the payables, so uh, accounts payables, it's paid with the bank with the business account. Post. Now let's go to the vendor. Ledger entries. And we're going to order by entry number. And let's see what we have. Well, we have uh, the last uh, transaction was the payment uh, for $32.78. The invoice was for the remaining amount, $32.78. Um, there is no remaining amount because these two apply to each other. And then we had the invoice for the prepayment. Here it is, 14.05. 14.05 paid right away because we had, remember, payment method code cash. And yes, that's, um, that's pretty much the, uh, the vendor ledger entries. Let's look at the general ledger entries and what we have here. We can see here the same, uh, the, tr the transactions, the payment uh, is affecting uh, the liability account, accounts payable, and also um, uh, offset is the uh, business account, 18200. We also have the invoice here. We paid the whole transaction was for 4600 we had a prepayment done of 1405 and the remaining amount is dropped into the payables whatever was paid was in other liabilities and these are uh, inventory accounts uh, the uh, the goods the inventory and this one is the cost of goods, or the finished goods. Because we get six desks, Athena desks in our inventory. And yes, that's, um, that's pretty much this use case. Uh, actually, no, we have also the prepayment here. I forgot about the prepayment. We had the invoice, the invoice, the prepayment invoice, um, the accounts affected were the um, uh, 
the accounts payable and the prepayment account and then um, and then we paid right away so we offset the amount that was in here uh, requested via the invoice and we uh, have to pay with a, with an asset with petty cash so it all looks good on the GL side now we're gonna have a look at um, at an overall uh, picture with what happened on the GL entries and that will conclude uh, the exercise for today so let's go through the transactions one by one so uh, the first transaction was the prepayment of the invoice uh, uh, an invoice for the prepayment these two transactions here they affect uh, the accounts um, uh, the prepayment account for uh, liabilities and uh, also uh, this is the AP let's have a look here in yellow we have the prepayment account 22600 and um, we have a debit for uh, the prepayment account and we have the EP a credit so that's how they offset and then the next we have the payment number two transaction number two let's have a look here what happened for number two it's in blue um, we pay with cash from the petty cash 18100 we paid um, 1400 and we offset um, the EP for 1400 then the number three transaction which is here we had um, we had the 4600 uh, that's affecting our um, our inventory um, and in a positive way we are receiving uh, the, uh, the, the the merchandise from the vendor um, but we need to to uh, cancel the prepayment amount and we need to also uh, credit the, uh, the accounts payable for the remainder so if we look on our little chart here at number three green is in three places it's in the goods for resale the inventory 46800 we also have the prepay account uh, we need to cancel that prepayment and we also need to account for the remaining amount to be charged 3200 and then the fourth one obviously is the payment of the remainder which um, it will affect one of our assets uh, a business account we're paying from here so credit 3200 and we're uh, offsetting the last AP amount 3200 and that's it this is um, this is all I wanted to talk about uh, today um, now it's on you to uh, to, to, to try it um you might run if you run uh, the use case in a sandbox you might run into some setup missing check my video on the customer payments see what i talked about uh, the uh, the setups on the general posting setup as well as on uh, sales and receivable setup um well in this case you're gonna have general posting setup and um uh, and the payables uh, setup you might have to do some some setup in there if you start with the Chrome database if you already have a well-developed posting um, setup then you might not need to do anything anyways thank you for uh, being here today and I'm looking forward to talk to you again uh, pretty soon thank you have a good day